<laughs> All right. So we had a question uh, on YouTube that came from Brian. And Brian was asking, I'm going to be traveling for a couple of weeks in New Zealand and I will be in a camper van. I'll be traveling with my girlfriend and I'm just wondering what is there to do in the evening when traveling in a camper van uh, without much power because we won't have that much electricity in the camper. What did you guys do during New Zealand's biggest gap year? All right, so things to do in an evening, um, you know, when traveling in New Zealand. So we already had kind of this kind of uh, question for Holiday Park, but we thought we'd pick this question to just tell you when you literally are not in a Holiday Park and there is nothing else than what you have in your camper van. And also I like the fact that uh, Brian mentioned something without power. Uh, because yeah, that's true. Very often you're going to be stuck in a camper van and you can have no no power, nothing. Um, and you're going to be like, okay, what, you know, what the hell? So first up, there is stargazing. Seriously, just open the door and enjoy the star. It's absolutely stunning. But you know, if you're not an astronomer, it doesn't really take you hours, so you can get. Can you just look up and say, yeah. "Oh, that's pretty," and yeah. yeah. <laughs> so look at the stars, you know, thinking they're pretty, and we do that often actually, and it, it's really phenomenal. It's really awesome. The, just, the night skies in New Zealand are really, really nice, but it doesn't really take you that long. Uh, another thing that you can be doing is to start planning your the rest of your trip, but because Brian is traveling only for a couple of weeks. He may already have his plan or this plan, although don't you, Brian? You probably already know exactly everything you're going to be doing, especially if you're watching our channel. I mean, let's be honest, our channel is mostly for other planners. Yes, right? I yeah, think so. so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what Laura and I, I used to do, and uh, we had uh, we had a lot of those little, um, uh, battery lights that we were charging with uh, solar little solar panels. So during the day, we let them we leave them charged on the dashboard of the van. And then in the evening, we had power for a good couple of hours, which is plenty enough time to kind of, you know, play a few games and then go to bed. So that's the thing. We do play a, a lot of board games. I think they're really fun to play. So there's board games, card games, and there's quite a lot of those. And so we're going to give you a few that we do really like. Um, and so the first one that uh, we play, and probably the one that we played the most was uh, Love Letters, wasn't it? Yeah, so um, it's an easy game to play as two-player games, uh, which is ideal if you're just traveling with your partner or just another friend around New Zealand. And it's only got, I think, maybe about nine cards or something. So it's very, yeah, very it has small. like about 15 cards. So 15 cards then. 15 playing cards. That's the cheapest thing to, like the easiest thing to pack any time for. A exactly. You just need to have an elastic band to keep the set together and you can just keep it in your pocket. And yeah, it, it's very, very travel friendly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Love Letters come from a company called AEG and it's, uh, it's very simple. You. Um, it's basically a game of deception. So you have you have a card that have a special power, and you try to um, find where the princess is, basically. And if you find where the princess is, well, the person that has the princess lost. Um, I think it goes up to uh, four players. So if you do find some other people, you can play it with them. And it's something that will take you probably about three minutes to learn. So it's not something too scary. And you can find that online on Amazon. And you can, uh, you know, it's free from Europe. Um, you know, board games is pretty big over there. So you, you probably know what Love Letters is, but yeah. But yeah. Um, so another game that we find super easy to play, but you need a slightly wider area, but it's very fun and it takes 30 seconds to learn and it gets you friends instantly when you start playing it. And then mm -hmm. you become enemies as the game finishes. Mm -hmm. It's called Cinco Linko. Or uh, what? Okay, KO. Oh, OKKO, okay, I think, in Europe. So there's two names for it. Yeah, so that's a, a tile laying game. So it's very, yeah, it's, it just comes in a very small set and maybe it's just about this yeah. sort of big. Um, and yeah, you just basically have four colors and each, um, yeah, each set of tiles is a different color. And the aim of the game is to just get five sets of your own colored tiles. It can be side like this or down or diagonal. Um, but you know, there's always people competing against you or working together to compete against you. So it can usually make for some pretty like crazy uh, rivalries going on. But it just the fact that it's so easy to teach other people as well. That is the sort of key of why this game is so good while traveling. Um, just yeah, because obviously you meet a lot of people along the way, especially if you're traveling in 
you know, uh, in, in a camper van or as a, you know, as a backpacker in hostels and stuff. And you, it's usually a good icebreaker to just teach someone this game in like 30 seconds, I think you said. So yeah, and it's, it's just too easy. Anyone can learn it. Yeah, so think about that game when you have to have five in the rows, you know, like where you drop the, the little round for, pieces. For, oh, what's it called? Like for, four connect by four. four. Oh, connect four, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so think about connect four, but that's on a flat surface basically. And you need to have a winner. So it forces you to have a winner because once everybody has played all their tiles and there is no winner, you have to pick up your old tile and then keep on placing it. So you keep on moving around until you get a winner. And uh, it's really fast. Like, I mean, I, I make it sound like it's a game that lasts forever, but it's yeah. definitely not. Uh, it's really, really fast. And, uh, and, and probably I'd say about 10 minutes for a game at most. And you have to, we know it's, it's quite, it's quite a fun game yeah. to play. Yeah. Um, all right. So next game, and, and that's, you know, there is also always those kind of classics. Um, and so we go kind of together. Uh, it's chess, domino, checkers, those kind of games, which are like really, really 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 famous games so those games they come in all different kind of size and versions and everything like that so don't bring your epic uh, giant size uh, carved miniature Lord of the ring chess set uh, that would not be travel friendly but those things that just flips in and if you do like chess i mean you know it is a unlimited replayable uh, uh yeah it's unlimited replayability yeah. of that so so yeah that's uh the, Chess is pretty famous, Checkers is really famous, Dominoes is pretty famous. Do I really need to talk about those ones? I don't think you do. Can I, I move on? Everyone, Can I move on? Everyone knows this. One. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So there is another game that we do really like and which is great to play at two players, but fantastic to play with more people. Um, let's say the learning time for this one is about, and I would say it's under 10 minutes, and it's called Sushi Go. Yeah, so I really like this game mainly because of the theme. It's about sushi and the pictures. It's just on, food. You just like food. Yeah, the picture. The pictures are really cute because all the sushis have little faces. You know, what's not to love? But uh, yeah, it's a it's a card game again. I think that this is a bit of a bigger deck of cards. It's maybe about the size of two normal decks of playing cards yeah. put together. Um, but you sort of just like. You are imagining a sushi train going around um, on one of those like carousels, and you're picking yeah. picking sushi off a off one of those carousels. But you know you could, but you can only pick one thing at a time. So you you know you're trying to scout out the other stuff that's going around the, the sushi train, and other people might be taking stuff you want to take. But you're trying to rack up points. You know if you get like. And um, if you're trying to get a certain type of sushi, you get more points, the more of those you get, for instance. Um, there's a lot of different rules to it, but it's, it's really fun. It's really easy to learn as well um, and really good to play with lots of people. And it's about sushi. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it's really cool. So it's a, it's a set collection uh, game. So you just yeah collect your sets, make some points. And uh, yeah, what's really cool is that you actually pass the cards around, so everybody interacts with the same cards. So it gives them really fun dynamic around the group, um, which which people do tend to really really do like. Um, next up, and something we're sticking with a lot of like small type card games, just because they're really easy to travel with. Like there are some you know more fun board games, obviously, but you we want to keep in mind like things which are travel. easy to travel. Yeah. And um, speaking of games, which actually create a really fun dynamic with people. Um, there is a game called Hanabi. So Hanabi can be played up to five people and talk about something that would bring people together. So it's a game which is cooperative. So you 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 don't play against each other, you play together not to lose. And the game has a system uh, that if you make five mistakes, you lose. And you can only give yourself a certain amount of clue. And what happens is you pick up, uh, depending on how many players you have, uh, four or five cards in your hand. And you can't look at them. So when you hold the card, you can see just the back of your cards. So first, it's so unnatural. You, you, everybody make a mistake. It's like, ah, oh, damn, I looked at the card. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so you just look at the back of the card and everybody else can see your cards. And your cards have, uh, have two things. They have a number and they have a color. So for example, you have the one blue, uh, the two yellow, and, and, and so on. And it goes from one to five. And what you need to do is to work together to place them in order. So you need to place one yellow, two yellows, three yellow, four yellows, and then one blue, and, and you need to do it that way, right? So if you already play the one yellow and you place another one yellow, you made a mistake, and then you lose one of those tokens. But the, the clues that you have to give to each other is only two things. You can only say a color or a number. 
So here's what happens. If Laura holds a, holds a card, I can just touch this card and this card and say, those two cards here, they're blue. So she knows they're blue. Then on the next round, I can say, this card here and this card here are twos. So she knows that this is the two blue and she knows that's a two, but she doesn't know the color. And it keeps going on and on and on. So you need to remember the clues. You can reorganize them in your hand, try to remember what it is. And then when you kind of don't know what to do, maybe you're gonna be like, okay, okay, there's the one blue. I think this is the card. You're gonna place it here. And just the faces on people when, when you know, you just play that card. You're like, no, I told you that was a four. Or, or, or those countings and see some of them have multiple but some of them don't for example like the five days only one of each so some people are like uh, are, are just kind of playing the fives when they shouldn't or discarding because you can also discard uh, cards to be able to get some more clues and when you say i have to discard the card randomly you're like no that was the five anyway it just just really fun creates a lot of reactions in the in, in the in the table and everybody is invested, like basically everybody is invested in everything that's happening because you work together. So you don't have a dull moment, which is quite fun. Yeah. And, and also you're not, like for people that don't like games too much, it's really good because they're never left alone in the game. Like they're, yeah. you know, they are part of the group because you all work together. I think Hanabi is one of Laura's and I's favorite games. Yeah, and it comes world. in a very small box as well. So you can actually just travel with that little box. Um, and it's very easy, it's very yeah. small. And you don't have to go through a complicated story anyway. It's like, you know, it's kind of one of those games that says you're creating a file. It's like, no, I'm just playing with the numbers. Yes. <laughs> um, one game I think I have on my mind as well is, um, it's actually a game you can play with playing cards, um, normal sets yeah. of playing cards. Obviously, everyone has their favorites when it comes oh, to yeah. the games they want to play with their playing cards. But um, one that we really love, and we actually learned in New Zealand when we were traveling around, um, like, you know, staying in hostels. And we actually learned this from people when we were traveling around and it did make a really awesome travel game. It's a game called Yanith. Um, it's very, it's a very easy sort of numbers game to learn. You just sort of like, you, you start off with five cards in your hand. There's, a, there's a, a sort of drop pile in the middle that people are getting rid of cards. And once you have a card that matches one of your cards, you can pick it up and, you know, you're trying to get down to the lowest score possible. It's super easy to learn. Like we've played this with people from l all sorts of nationalities and things like that. Um, so it's a really good, like, sort of social game and easy to learn and explain. Um, and yeah, we also have. Um, we actually love this game so much that we have an article on nzpocketguide.com, um, which actually explains the rules to the game. So um, Robin will make sure to put that in the description, <laughs> just to show you guys, like, if you're interested in this game called Yaniv. Um, which you can play with any sets of like normal playing cards. Uh, we have all the instructions on how to play it on the website. If people want to Google it, how do you spell Yaniv? Yaniv is spelled Y-A-N-I-V. Yaniv? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think all the other words were quite easy. Oh, Hanabi was H-A-N-N-A-B-I. Yeah. That was the other. Okay, uh, and probably the last one on our list, uh, or maybe not, because we do have a lot of games and we do like. Uh, we can like talk about games. this all day. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, one of them is called uh, Exploding Kittens. So that sounds rough and tough, <laughs> but it's actually just a really cute game. It's some um, there's kittens of all sizes and then shapes, and there's watermelon kittens and all those kind of things <laughs> yeah. in the game. And so that's quite a fun game. Um, so it's kind of a game called a Take That kind of game. So you kind of fight each other. Um, if you have any any game where you you know if you know any games normal kind of game when you kind of fight you know with card like which one's the highest or this and that it's a similar kind of take on that where you are trying to avoid picking a card that says exploding kitten if you pick that card you either lose one of your safety cards which is called a diffuse um, and so so you pick the exploding kitten you have a diffuse you play it and you lose that or if you pick it and you don't have a diffuse, you lose. Um, it creates some really fun tension because almost every single time this game is designed to bring you to the last few cards. So when you're down to the last few, last few cards and you start fighting over the last few cards, oh man, that becomes dangerous. Yeah, it kind of Woo! gives you the same sort of vibe as if when you see on movies and stuff when they have to defuse a bomb and it's like oh when the, the clock's ticking and you're like yeah. oh my god it's gonna happen at any moment and then bam it's like yeah it, it is like yeah it just creates that tension like Robin says and that gets everyone kind of really like eee! 
yeah. so that, that's what makes the game so fun yeah so exploding kitten is really popular and, and it's actually one of the easiest games to find that the one uh, you know out of all the one we mentioned right here one of the easiest one to find you can find it in mainstream stores so it's mainstream stores such as uh, Bar and nobles walmart Target um, and the equivalent that you may have in your country. Yeah. So it's, it's a very easy one to find. But all of those games are easy to find on Amazon anyway, which is where everybody shops, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, is there any other game? Yes. Yeah. Oh, if you do like dice, there's a lot of people that like dice, and we haven't mentioned any game with dice right here. So obviously, Yahtzee is very popular. Everybody knows Yahtzee and know how to play Yahtzee. Um, but there is also um, a game zombie dice which is kind of a press your luck kind of game so you kind of roll dice and you try to get brains but not get shot and uh, if you get a certain amount of brains which i think is 15 yeah I something think so, like that you win but every time you roll the dice if you ever get three um three uh shotgun, shotgun. in the face yeah. you lose everything you gathered so let's say you roll like two brains and one one shotgun you put the shotgun inside, you keep your two brains, and you need to decide, do you want to roll again? If you roll again and you roll, you know, two brains and one shotgun, you now have four brains and two shotguns. You're good. But let's say you roll and you have two shotguns and one brain. You three brains that you just have lost. Your score is zero because you had three shotguns. So it's kind of like really fun. It's kind of like, will you do it? Will you not? It's really, really yeah. fun. And one of the really good things with that game is that there is a kind of an unlimited amount of players. So if you travel with a few extra people, uh, if you plan on meeting people and everything, and also it's a such super easy game to learn. So it's unlimited amount. So let's say you're eight people, you can have a blast playing that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that can be a nice variant from the classic werewolf that everybody likes to play. Uh, likes to play. And uh, yeah, you don't need to buy the ball game for that. You you, you know you don't need to buy the card set for Werewolf is quite funny to play yeah. without any of that. Um, also with the zombie die, it comes in a little cup. So oh, yeah. it's kind of, it's very small and easy to travel with. I think there's maybe how many die is in the... I'd say, the, maybe I think it's 15. Maybe, yeah, maybe 15 die that comes in this little cup. But when you're, you're supposed to shake the ah. die in the cup, which is very noisy. So if you're maybe... Uh, playing this in a hostel or something in the communal area, then you might be seen as a little bit annoying to do that. But if you're just playing in your camper van and you know it's just like yeah. you're in your own space and stuff, um, yeah, or, or otherwise you can find other ways of shaking the die up without using the cup. But yeah, whenever Robin and I play that, we're usually like, oh my God, it's so annoyingly loud when we're like shaking up the die. So yeah, um, but generally it's a very easy and small game to travel with and it's extra light. All right, so that's a nice, good list of games for you, Brian. So obviously, like playing games on the road is is really easy, and and also it just it just uses no power whatsoever. Um, if you do want some extra ideas, there are plenty of apps which are really fun. So there is apps like Charades, so you can play Charades. It's always quite funny. Uh, or there are some apps where you can uh, read stories or play your own adventures or those kind of things. They're a great way to kind of keep yourself entertained in your campervan at night if you have no power. But sending using your phone battery may not be the wisest thing if power is, is always a problem. Yeah. Um, walking around your campsite, if there are some people around, um, you know, they're probably in the same situation than you. So chat with them and meet some friends. It's always really great. Oh, the last thing that we have for you to do in an evening is to grab a torch light and go in a small, short walk at night. The wild life in New Zealand is extremely different at night than it is uh, during the day. You can find some really amazing insects like wetas, which are gigantic, you know, um, wood uh, wood eater kind yeah, of Yeah, they're kind of like a giant cricket type thing. Yeah. yeah. If you think about a locust, that, that's exactly what that yeah. is. Um, so yes, that's that's uh, that's really awesome to do. You may be lucky enough to spot a kiwi bird, although you probably won't. Yeah, but, there's um, also the little native owl called a marpaw. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, the forest really come uh, come alive at night in New Zealand, which is really awesome. So we recommend walk, which are less than one hour. Uh, to do at night, it's really fun. So if you're around National Park, for example, in the central North Island, there's some really amazing little, very short walk. And it's also, it's always really, really fun to do. You might even find some glow worms yeah. as well, which are little blue, little well, little maggots that shine little blue lights. I'm sure you've heard of them if you've heard of the Waitomo Caves, but you can actually just see them at night when you, generally, if you're walking near creeks or where there's water, there tends to be quite a lot around there. 
We do have an article on nzpocketguide.com, which is, I think it's called like the 10 things to do in New yep. Zealand after dark or at night. And yeah, we list up loads of other ideas there for you as well. And finally, the last thing that we have for you to do uh, when you are in a camper van and you don't have power, Brian, is learn a new skill. A lot of people actually just kind of forget that, you know, when you have free time on your hand, you can do that. <laughs> so you can grab a cheap guitar from a hotel or from a second hand shop and maybe try to scratch the guitar and try to <laughs> learn that. Uh, you can grab some pieces of paper and try to learn origami. You can, you know, there is so many things that you can actually learn. Learn to make fire, for example, you know, rub like a couple of pieces of wood, read how to do that and practice and practice and practice. Um, you can also grab some pieces of wood and grab a knife and learn some wood carving. Um, that's something that I'm actually going to be learning next time we're actually having a little trip. I, uh, I'm planning on trying to learn wood carving uh, just to see if I can make something with my hands. Um, so there is plenty of things that you can actually learn, like learn a, a non-digital skill. And yeah. I think like a lot of people kind of forget those kind of things. Um, you know, it, it's it's very silly, but you know, even just in the camper van with the tiny kitchen that you have, you can actually learn like you know basic baking or those kind of things. You yeah. can definitely learn ton of stuff. You can bake bread actually without putting it in the oven. I think it's called like a Dutch oven yeah, where yeah. you like bake it in a in a pan. Yeah, for instance. there's you all can, sorts of things. You can make yeah. pizzas in a frying pan in, uh, in, <laughs> yeah. in the stuff. Like seriously, that, that, there is a lot of like fun recipes like that. So you can prepare yourself and I like, print a few things and this and that like for, for example like the last time we went on the trip with uh, Laura I, I like to download like uh, you know uh, ebooks and everything and I had like you know 50 things that you need to learn before you die or something like that and that's that was kind of short things and you know we were reading about one or two a day and we were just kind of chatting or discussing this so I, I think it was it was really fun like yeah. uh, it's it's really it's a really kind of good way to kind of expand your mind. You're traveling already and discovering new cultures and all that. But, uh, you know, if on top of it, you can expand your mind, it's quite, it's quite fun as well. Yeah. So if you did find this video useful, make sure to like. It's a great way to say thank you to us for all our hard work. And if you uh, do want to see more videos about traveling in New Zealand, make sure to subscribe. We are here uh, every single week.